Good, how are you? Good. So, what would you like to do tonight? Um, I was just kind of thinking on working on something we haven't studied before. Okay. The past few days, all we had was tests, and I've also been absent a few days. Um, okay. So, I don't know what we were studying. Okay. Uh, so I was just wondering if we could pick a topic we haven't learned from the textbook and try to learn that. Absolutely. In fact, I have some interesting stuff that we can talk about uh, with regards to mathematics. It tends to be somewhat advanced, but I think you'll be able to understand. Let's talk about the five most important numbers in math. Um... What do you think? Some of them. Would pi be one? Pi is one. It's another one. Maybe like x? X is a variable, so oh. it's not really a number. But there is the other most special number in math is called e, which is Euler's constant. And we'll talk about E in a second. Okay? We'll talk about each of these. How about I? We've talked about I, right? Yeah, that's an imaginary number, right? Right. Square root of negative 1. And the other two would be 1 and 0. I mean, this is arguable, but there's all kinds of places in math where being greater than 1 or being less than 1 makes a huge difference. Um, yeah. Exponentiation, logarithms, all kinds of places. And of course 0 is extremely important as the divider between positive and negative numbers. Now, pi is what? It's 3.14. What's, it, what's its of, definition? Isn't it um, a number that never ends? It is the circumference of a circle divided by the diameter of a circle oh. is what pi is. And you're right. It does never end. It goes on forever. dot, 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 never repeats. It's an irrational number. There's no way I can write it as a fraction. But no matter what the size of the circle or in what part of the universe you are in, the relationship between the circumference of a circle and its diameter is pi. And in fact, when we talk about trying to send probes into outer space, and what we would use to try to communicate with aliens if they ever saw our stuff, pi is very dominant as one of the most important numbers in the universe. All alien civilizations would recognize it. So if you could somehow express this number or this relationship, that would be a good way of communication. Okay? But that's what pi is. Now, you know what 1 is, and you know what 0 are. Let's talk about E for a second. All right. If if I want to if I want to know what happens to this expression as x gets very, very large. Well, first of all, if we took 1 to the billionth power, what would that be equal to? Um, 1 billion? No, just 1. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. 1 squared is 1, 1 cubed is 1, 1 to any power is 1. Okay? So even if I said 1 to a trillion, that's still equal to 1. 
All right. All right. All right. Well, as x gets very, very large, what's in the parentheses gets closer and closer to 1. In other words, if I said let x equal 100, then I would have 1.01 .01 to the hundredth power. With me? Okay. If I said let's let x equal 1,000, then I would have 1.001 .001 to the thousandth power. Okay. What do you think happens as x goes to infinity? Um, what does this number go to? The closest thing to one as possible Let's, without actually being yeah, one. Yeah, hold on. Let me let me say one more thing about this. If I take one point zero 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 and I could add a million zeros to it and I stick a one at the end. And if I take that to the billionth, that's a bigger number than one. Yeah. Right? I mean, if I take 1.01 .01 to the hundredth power, it's not going to be 1. It's going to be some number bigger than 1. So, as the exponent gets bigger and bigger, then this number, which gets closer and closer to 1, you can see that you have two different powers. I, I used to think of this as my Superman uh, when I used to be a big fan of Superman comic books when I was a kid, and, and the one thing they always used to talk about was, what happens if you have an irresistible force that meets an immovable object? Okay, Superman could be the irresistible force, nothing can stop him. And on the other hand, Superman's twin brother or clone could be the immovable object that nothing could move him. So what happens when you have that irresistible force meeting an immovable object? What happens? Well, you kind of have that going on here. The number inside the parentheses gets closer and closer to 1. The number, the exponent, gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, this number goes to E. Two point seven one is E. In other words, if I were to put it into a calculator, let's say, forget the billionth one, but I'll put this into a calculator and I get two point seven one four six. Okay? Now I let X get bigger, become a thousand. Now I put this into the calculator, and guess what happens? Is all it does is it adds more significant digits to E. And so as you oh. let X get bigger and bigger and bigger, this number, it's kind of like pi. It just goes on forever, forever, and you keep adding more and more digits to the end of it. But it never varies from 2.71. No matter how big X gets, I can let X be a billion or a trillion or a quadzillion or a Google, and it's still going to be 2.71 and most of these numbers that I'm not sure if these two numbers are correct here, but the 2.71 is correct. Okay? Now, why is this so important in mathematics? Well, because... So many things grow at this kind of model. If you put bacteria in a Petri dish, it's going to grow based on the amount that's there, always. If there's five bacteria, it's going to grow based on five bacteria. 
if there's 50 bacteria, it's going to grow based on 50 bacteria. Turns out that there are literally thousands of real life models that follow this expression, 1 plus 1 over x, all raised to the x power. And that's why E is so important. Now, I got my computer doing funny things here again. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I may have to call you back. Uh, we'll wait for a moment here. Let me see what happens if I close this out. Uh, this hasn't happened to me for quite some time. Um, let's see if this fixes it. Nah, if my mouse is jumping around, I'm going to have to log out and log back in. David, I may have to reboot and resend you a new meeting ID number. Why don't you log off and I'll be back to you in three minutes. <laughs>